What if I told you that there is a supermassive black hole out there that is so ancient and so distant that it challenges everything we thought we knew about the early universe? A black hole that is smaller than any other of its kind, yet brighter than a billion stars. A black hole that was born when the universe was still a baby, barely 570 million years old. This black hole is so weird and so unexpected that some people think it could be from another universe. Yes, you heard me right. Another universe. A parallel reality that somehow leaked into ours and left behind this cosmic anomaly. Is that possible? Is that plausible? Or is there a more natural explanation for this black hole? Sounds incredible, right? Well, in this episode, we are going to explore this amazing discovery and what it means for our understanding of black holes in the cosmos. We will also answer some of the most frequently asked questions about this topic and show you some stunning images and data from the James Webb Space Telescope. So buckle up, because we are about to embark on a journey to the edge of time and space. Black holes are some of the most mysterious and fascinating objects in the universe. They are regions of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. They can form when massive stars collapse at the end of their lives, or when two smaller black holes merge together. But how did the first black holes form? And when did they form? These are questions that have puzzled astronomers for decades. According to our current theories, the first black holes should have formed about 100 million years after the Big Bang, when the first stars and galaxies started to form. These black holes were probably very small, only a few times the mass of the Sun. But over time, they grew bigger and bigger by swallowing more matter and merging with other black holes. Eventually, some of them became supermassive, with masses of millions or billions of suns. These supermassive black holes are usually found at the centers of galaxies, where they influence their evolution and shape their structure. But there is a problem with this scenario. It takes a lot of time for black holes to grow so big. And yet, we have observed supermassive black holes that existed when the universe was less than a billion years old. How did they form so quickly? And how did they become so bright? These questions have challenged our theories and models for a long time. But now, thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, we might be closer to finding some answers. One of these results is the discovery of the most distant active supermassive black hole ever seen. The black hole is located in a galaxy called Sears 1019, which formed just over 570 million years after the Big Bang. That's only about 4% of the current age of the universe. To put that into perspective, if you imagine that the history of the universe is a 24-hour clock, this black hole existed at 1257 AM. But what makes this black hole even more remarkable is its size and brightness. The black hole has a mass of about 9 million times that of the Sun, which is much smaller than most other supermassive black holes in the early universe, which typically have masses of over 1 billion suns. And yet, despite its relatively small size, this black hole is extremely bright. It emits so much energy that it outshines its entire galaxy by a factor of 1,000. It is also brighter than any other known active supermassive black hole at this distance. How is this possible? How can such a small black hole be so luminous? And how did it form so soon after the universe began? These are questions that have baffled astronomers and challenged our theories of black hole formation and evolution. One possible explanation is that this black hole is feeding on a very large amount of gas and dust from its surroundings, creating a hot and bright disk around it called an accretion disk. This disk radiates a lot of infrared light, which is what James Webb can detect very well. Another possibility is that this black hole is spinning very fast, which makes it more efficient at converting matter into energy. But these are just hypotheses that need to be tested and confirmed by further observations and analysis. The Webb team plans to use more time on the telescope to study this black hole in more detail and try to understand its properties and origin better. This discovery is part of a larger research program called the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science, SEERS, survey which aims to use James Webb to peer far back into the universe's history and explore the first stars, galaxies, and black holes. The survey covers a region of space between the constellations of Ursa Major and Bodus, and it has already revealed over 100,000 galaxies, some of which are among the oldest and most distant ever seen.
One of the questions that you might have about this topic is, why do we care about finding and studying these ancient black holes? What do they tell us about the universe and ourselves? Well, there are many reasons why we care about these black holes. First of all, they are fascinating objects in their own right, and they reveal some of the most extreme and exotic phenomena in nature. They test our understanding of physics and challenge our imagination. They also help us learn more about the history and evolution of the universe and how it became what it is today. By observing these black holes, we can trace back the formation and growth of galaxies, stars and planets, and maybe even find clues about the origin of life. Another question that you might have is, how do we find these black holes in the first place? How do we know that they are there? Well, finding these black holes is not easy. They are very far away, and their light is very faint and red-shifted by the expansion of the universe. That means that we need very powerful and sensitive telescopes to detect them, especially in the infrared part of the spectrum, which is where most of their light is emitted. That's why James Webb is so important for this research. It has a large mirror that can collect a lot of light and a suite of instruments that can observe in different wavelengths of infrared light. It also orbits far away from the Earth, where it can avoid the interference and noise from our atmosphere and other sources. But even with James Webb, finding these black holes is not straightforward. We need to use various techniques and methods to identify them among the millions of other sources in the sky. One of these techniques is called color selection, which means that we look for sources that have a certain color or brightness in different bands of infrared light. This color can indicate that the source is very distant and very bright, which are two characteristics of active supermassive black holes. Another technique is called spectroscopy, which means that we measure the spectrum or the fingerprint of light from the source. This spectrum can reveal information about the chemical composition, temperature, velocity, and distance of the source. It can also show us if there are any emission lines or features that are typical of active supermassive black holes. By using these techniques and others, we can find and study these black holes and learn more about their nature and origin. But how do we know that these sources are really black holes and not something else? How do we confirm their identity? Well, one way to do that is to compare their properties with those predicted by our theories and models of black hole formation and evolution. For example, we can compare their masses, luminosities, temperatures, spins, accretion rates, environments, etc., with those expected from different scenarios of black hole growth and feedback. We can also look for any signs of variability or periodicity in their light curves, which could indicate fluctuations in their accretion disks or jets. Another way to do that is to look for any effects or influences that these black holes have on their surroundings or on other sources nearby. For example, we can look for any gravitational lensing effects caused by their strong gravity bending the light from background sources. We can also look for any feedback effects caused by their powerful radiation or jets heating or blowing away the gas and dust around them. These effects could have important consequences for the formation and evolution of stars and galaxies in their vicinity. By using these methods and others, we can confirm that these sources are indeed black holes and not something else. So there you have it, the most distant active supermassive black hole ever seen, detected by the James Webb Space Telescope, a discovery that challenges our theories and models of black hole formation and evolution, and that opens up new possibilities for exploring the early universe, a discovery that shows us how amazing and mysterious our cosmos is, and how much more there is to learn and discover. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, Please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.